They are the um, Search Engine Land Awards. It's our first year of doing them. Um, we have wanted to do them for ages and finally felt like we were up to the level of being able to look at all the entries for the best uh, uh, work that happens in SEO and that happens in SEM. So there's a whole variety of categories for both enterprise and uh, small, mid-sized businesses. And I'm like super excited. And if it weren't 9 a.m., I would sound super excited. <laughs> about having it because I think that, um, I'll, just a little thing, I'll give me one more minute, but I was at another conference last, last week and um, one of the Google executives was being interviewed on stage and they made a joke about, we want to ask you about some things other than search because search is boring. And I almost left that mic, search isn't boring, you don't get it. <laughs> And you know, there's still that perception, like, okay, well, you got your social, you got your, you got your, you know, display, you got all this other stuff going on here. We got our video. Look, I'm on YouTube. I'm on. My... And it's like search is like the powerhouse that has been driving the internet and driving literally self-driving cars. <laughs> it's funding all that sort of stuff because it's such marvelous, wonderful advertising and marketing. So please, please, please get your campaign submitted in to the Landys because we want to give out some great awards in, November, in um, New York when we are back for SMX East and get the recognition out there that so many of you people who have been in search really deserve. So, all right. That said, over to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, we are going to get started with our keynote, and we're very excited, and we're going to start off, and Jenny's going to get us going with our little introduction. Yes, so um, good morning, Jerry. So for those of you that don't know, Jerry Dishler is uh, VP of Product Management for AdWords, which, is it fair to just call you the head of AdWords uh, yeah. in layman's terms? Well, I, I lead product management for the search ads team at Google. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in previous roles during your tenure, career. You've been there for 10 years. 10 Do you years. know that? Almost 10, yeah. Almost 10. Um, Jerry served as product management lead for new ad formats, where he led the strategy to kind of enhance the basic text ad. Sure. Um, and so with the introduction of site links and uh, PLAs, uh, <coughs> product listing ads. Uh, and before that, Jerry led Google's commerce products, including Google Checkout, which is now Google Wallet, and Google Product Search. True. So anything you'd like to add or talk about what you're excited to see here? Sure. I mean, so, uh, yeah, that's a good intro on me. Uh, you know what I do for a living now. Um, in terms of, uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be able to speak with all of you. Um, you know, taking a look at the agenda uh, and the attendee list, um, we seem to have like a who's who of performance marketing here, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is to talk to a bunch of you about what's working and what's not. Uh, in search ads and in AdWords. Um, you know, we were really inspired by all the great work uh, that all of you do um, because we know that search advertising is so important for so many of your businesses. Um, and so uh, I'm really interested to have conversations with folks uh, later on uh, and to get your questions later today. Um, I'm also really excited for the team here at Google. We have a bunch of folks uh, from Google here, uh, including some who are here in this room. Uh, and we have uh, a separate um, room set up uh, for a series of events, I'll Learn with Google. Uh, we have a bunch of content. Uh, we've recently uh, released uh, some best practices content, which is excellent, uh, with the marketing team, uh, working directly with the product managers and engineers who work uh, on AdWords in order to provide uh, what we believe to be uh, the best advice for advertising on Google. Uh, we're going to present a lot of that content uh, in the room. Uh, and we're also going to talk about uh, some timely things like, for example, uh, uh, upgraded URLs. Uh, the time is coming soon, so if you haven't started thinking about that, uh, now is a good time uh, to drill down on that as well. Great. Great. Um, and we are going to, and by the way, if you don't know Ginny already, she is awesome. She is our paid search correspondent, paid search writer for uh, Search Engine Land and Mark Me Land, and it's so great to have her. Um, and she also gave me a lot of homework for the session, so <laughs> I went through all the homework and I did my reading to make sure I was up to speed. We're going to go back and forth. Uh, we're going to split up questions between us. Um, it's sort of a form of remarketing, so if she doesn't get the answer that she was looking for, I will follow you back. Okay. And we, it'll just keep going like that until um, you make the purchase. A-B testing. Yes. <laughs> Um, so to start off, you confirmed last month that uh, mobile queries have surpassed uh, desktop in 10 different countries, including the U.S. and Japan. Uh, can you talk more about 
what that means in terms of the shift of buying behavior and, and also what is the whole micro moments thing that you, you talked about today? Yeah, so. yeah. so uh, you know, from my perspective, this is like a super big deal and, and mobile queries surpassing desktop queries are kind of a watershed moment for search. Um, you know, mobile is growing really fast and the reason why is because consumer behavior has really changed fundamentally. Um, what I mean by that is that the average consumer in most markets uh, are bouncing across multiple devices and have uh, these, in, instead of the very linear process, the linear and measurable process that was the hallmark for search advertising for a long time where either you go to a search engine or you go to a website and you browse and then you convert and that's trackable end to end in this very linear process, we have uh, a much more fragmented journey. Um, and to give you an example of that, um, and, and, and the fragmented journey we're calling uh, micro moments. It's these little snippets of intent that you have uh, throughout your day. Um, we, we, uh, Shrita Ramaswamy, uh, uh, my boss who runs ads and commerce at Google, uh, uh, recently had an event where he uh, launched the micro moments uh, concept in the micro moments website, which includes uh, a bunch of interviews that we did. In addition to all the data oriented uh, stuff that we do by taking a look at numbers and trends across Google, which we've been doing for years, and we've been building towards uh, this cross-device world uh, for years. Um, we also have uh, uh, some actual uh, like uh, ethnographic type research where we're following people around throughout their day uh, in order to understand how, they, how their purchase behavior has changed. And so I'll just give you one example of this that I thought was kind of fun. Um, there's uh, this woman who, uh, bought a plot of land because she's building a house like from the land up and they actually drive out and you see this like patch of dirt somewhere uh, out in the burbs um, and she has nothing but the entire process she's doing mostly in her spare time on her mobile phone and if you think about you know how she would do that two three five years ago she'd go to her desktop computer and she'd She'd block off some time either in the evening or on the weekend and, and do this work. But now she does it in the spare five minutes when she's waiting for her kids at school or when she's uh, in the grocery line or when she uh, you know, has a break between meetings or other things of this nature. And so you know, all the builders who she interacts with, all the appliance manufacturers, all the people who have fixtures and things like that, they all need to be thinking about mobile too. And most of them aren't to be frank. They think, wow, this is a really considered purchase. Like, why should we bother with this? And the reason why is because consumer behavior has changed. Now, at Google, like, like I said, we've been, we've been building to this for, for a long time. And so we're trying to develop products and features uh, in order to capture these moments of intent. And we think that we do intent pretty well. And we have a really good platform across Google properties in order to be able to get to those moments of intent that really matter. This is not about the time spent in apps versus web. This is about the time when people are ready to make commercial decisions and being able to capture those. Um, and so across apps and web on any device, uh, what we're building towards uh, is uh, to be able to create a great platform to capture those moments of intent. Um, so we, and kind of leading on that as far as the ad units that have been coming out. Um, so you've, we've seen, um, as come up for specific verticals, automotive, hotels, uh, Google Compare, although we're not seeing ads yet in Google Compare, other than the credit cards, right? Uh, well, these credit cards uh, we have in a few states, um, uh, auto insurance, uh, and also in the UK. Uh, in the UK, we have mortgages. We're going to launch right. mortgages later on this year. Okay. So the ads are running in those markets for the mortgages and... That's correct. Yeah, it's a commercial okay. unit which drives to a commercial experience. Yep. Okay. Um, so... I, I guess, and more recently is the nearby, the local listings near me, sure. local listings. So is Google moving away from text ads, at least in certain in industries? Are we going to have a use for text ads? Text ads are going to be here to stay for a while, uh, for a long while. But what we're trying to do with these new formats and what we're trying to do with these richer formats, you saw this with extensions too, where we're trying to enhance the text ads in order to make them more meaningful for users. And this really, really matters, especially on mobile. And this is why a lot of the stuff that we're doing here is mobile only or mobile first. Um, uh, so for example, the new automotive format that we're working on is mobile first, and then uh, we're likely going to backport it to, to tablet and, and desktop. Um, you know, 
When, when session lengths are compressed as much as they are on mobile, uh, we really need to drive users to answers much more quickly, uh, and user expectations have increased. So now people don't like 10 blue links in search. Um, you know, they expect richer content, and so we need to deliver that richer content to them. Um, so what we're going to try to do on the user side is to build these formats uh, that are richer and more interactive and uh, uh, look better and perform better on mobile devices uh, as much as we can. Uh, and in addition, also have uh, the flexibility of text ads. So no matter what you're advertising, no matter what your intent, uh, we also have, have those opportunities too. From the advertiser side, it's also quite interesting. When we build a lot of these formats, we do so with structured data. Um, and uh, by advertising based on structured data rather than on keywords, um, people are, uh, businesses are able to advertise in a way that's more natural to them. So for product listing ads, if you have 50 million products, which is admittedly a very large, uh, uh, very large um, retail business, but there are people who have 50 million products in our, our system, um, you know, selecting the, I don't know, like 250 million keywords that you need in order to sustain that number of products is a pretty daunting task. But if you can just upload a feed and sort of classify your products based on their margins and do things like that, then that makes it a more tractable problem. So we're trying to hit this from both the user side and the advertiser side uh, in order to try to create these um, uh, better experiences. Yeah, So because the image piece, so if you're not an automotive advertiser, you might have looked at those ads and said, whatever, it has nothing to do with me. Where's my stuff? <laughs> so, and I'm wondering if the if that's kind of kind of extend into other verticals, and kind of part of that question, if the um, the image extensions that kind of came and went really quickly, if this is sort of like a reiteration of of that. Yeah, we're hoping to. It has to be meaningful. So the secret the secret is um, that on on search, it has to be informative, relevant content, and so it's really hard to get a general purpose image format or a general purpose video format to work in search. So let's harp on video a little bit, because that's one where you know, it worked really well in media and entertainment content. If you've got a movie that you're about to see, then sort of like your bullseye answer for video is getting a trailer, right? But if you are selling insurance and you have like a two and a half minute video that explains some concept in insurance, the user has the option of, do I click on a web page, and if I get the right answer, I can, uh, I, I can evaluate that in 10 seconds, and if I get the wrong answer, I can evaluate that in two seconds and then go back, or do I watch this like three minute video, uh, and I'm not really sure what I'm getting, like what do I do? Um, so when users see that kind of content, they inevitably ignore the video. And so it's just not worth the space on the page because it's not clear that it's necessarily gonna deliver the answer. And so the reason that we've taken this vertical approach is because for each vertical, we can create these. We can create a, a template uh, with a combination of structured data and rich content that will better lead to an, an answer. Um, so, so that's the reason that we're taking that approach rather than a more general purpose one. So, if you're not covered yet, you could be covered. Yeah, potentially, and so um, potentially, we're. I mean, we would love to extend this to every different type of ad. We don't think that that's realistic based on the the vast variety of ads that we have in the system, but we're looking for ways to create more lightweight verticals so that we can scale this across, to identify the use cases that will allow us to scale across a number of lightweight verticals in the future. Um, last week, Google, like I, can you hear yeah. me? Uh -uh. Uh, I shoved this behind my back, oh, and I turned it off as yeah. I did it. <laughs> Now, there you go, there you go. Um, I turned myself off accidentally, sorry. Um, I'm just getting so old. <laughs> I was saying I lost my phone twice this week. <laughs> I keep forgetting things. <laughs> Excuse me while I have a meltdown. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, we need a product for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure there's some ad that'll help me if I can just remember right. what to search for. Right. Um, so um, last week, uh, Google confirmed that the buy button is real, that we're gonna get these buttons coming to uh, search ads. Um, you did confirm it, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, um, so, you know, that, so you're gonna be able to actually buy from the search, from some certain kinds of search ads that uh, will be happening out on Google. Can you talk, can you tell us more about it, or the strategy about it, or, or anything more about it? <laughs> um, I can tell you a little more about it. I mean, okay. so, um, first of all, we have no intention of being a retailer. Let me just say this up front. Like, we do not want to become a retailer. We want to uh, 
allow retailers to have uh, effective experiences uh, where they can drive conversions and delight their customers. Um, and so, and that's true across all of these verticals. It's not like, it, it's, it's, it's not like uh, what we're trying to do is to try to take over more of the process so we can become an insurer. What we want to do is we want to provide a great experience to provide like great high converting leads to insurers as quickly as possible. And in doing so on mobile devices, it's got to take fewer steps than it does on desktop devices. And that's the reason that we're doing this kind of stuff. Um, so uh, what, what the buy buttons are really about is, is mobile and, and driving mobile transactions. Um, you know, particularly in retail, uh, uh, mobile conversion rates are uh, a little lower uh, when you consider straight online conversions versus desktop conversion rates, and that's because, uh, you know, keyboard input is difficult, uh, you don't necessarily have your uh, payment credentials or other things like that, sessions are shorter, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we did is we went out to a bunch of, uh, uh, of retailers and said, hey, like, what if we can short circuit this a little bit? What if we can, you know, take information that's already on the device, for example, you know, payment credentials and uh, uh, user information on Android devices, and we can use that in order to make the payment flow work much better. Um, and, and folks said, okay, I'm willing to give this a try. Um, and there's much more motivation in a mobile context than there was uh, in the desktop world, uh, where there are lots of alternatives and keyboard input is pretty easy. Um, and so we're going to try it out. And we think that it's likely to be great for users and advertisers uh, if we can get it right. Now, this is certainly, this is a, this is, this is a speculative effort. You know, uh, we haven't started running experiments. But we just want to make the process easier for, uh, uh, for consumers uh, and increase online conversions. And we think this is a pretty effective way to do so. And it's not just us. I mean, take a look at the, the other news yesterday, which is that on Pinterest and Instagram, they're testing yeah. uh, the same thing. And it's just, if you can buy at places that are appropriate um, and do so effectively, um, uh, this could be a, a, a great way to improve monetization on mobile devices. So we're really excited about it. Will it only be on Android using Android Pay, or it will be on iOS as well? So actually, uh, uh, I believe initially on Android, but, uh, uh, but you know, I'm not close enough to the team to, to know. Uh, that's something that we can follow up on. Okay. And is, by the way, is there, a, is there a formal name for the button? We keep calling it the buy button, but do you have a cool Google code word? Oh, I have no Google, uh, cool Google code words. <laughs> we'll, I have many, we'll but not for up. that project. We'll, we'll call it Buy Button Geddon. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with something else. No, no, no. Because we all know that all those Geddons are them. like, you know, such horrible experiences that affect so many people. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll find a good name. <laughs> all right. Oh, my gosh. Um, so one area where we haven't seen a lot of development since enhanced campaigns is... Uh, the levers that marketers have. So we've got bid modifiers okay. for mobile, and we have um, uh, and uh, location bidding, okay. right? Um, but they're kind of blunt. I, I mean, we have mobile preferred ad setting. Okay, we got mobile preferred ads. You, you yes, got mobile, mobile preferred extensions. ads, and you have you know your plus or minus percentages for bid modifiers. Sure. But they're not, I mean, they're sort of, they're sort of blunt. So are we going to see more development for tools or um, ways for marketers to be able to optimize their mobile campaigns or strategies better? Yes, I mean, we're certainly working on mobile forecasting and other things like that in order to, to help you, you know, understand what's going on with mobile. We also have a ton of mobile measurement. And so, um, you know, hopefully we can talk about uh, that as, as, as part of this because we've been developing a bunch of mobile measurement technologies. So actually, I think we've done quite a lot since enhanced campaigns on, mobiles. We've got, on, on mobile. We've got uh, mobile-oriented formats. Uh, we have uh, all the apps work that we've done. Uh, we have some work in automated bidding that we've done uh, in order to allow you to do better mobile optimization. It's using more uh, mobile and uh, location-oriented factors in automated bidding. Um, we ha and we have uh, mobile measurement as well. And so, um, you know, I think we've actually done quite a lot there. What, what more should we be doing? I don't know. I, I find it hard to just check a box that says mobile preferred, and then you're kind of, depending on what vertical you're in or what it is, you, you kind of lose control, I feel like, from a marketing standpoint. Really? Yes. I mean, so I feel if, like if you want like, to like maybe it's going to get served. I don't know. Maybe it won't. And is it a tablet? Is it? No, it's not a tablet. Is it a smartphone? And so uh, to me, I feel like that checkbox is sort of 
Mm. Like, not, doesn't designate enough to and me. So you'd like, um, so I mean, uh, if you take a look at mobile creatives, right, we have a bunch of mobile-oriented formats. So for example, call only we launched, right? right? In yeah. order to be able to drive calls, we have app-oriented formats that will drive app intent. Uh, we have the mobile preferred creatives, of course. We have, uh, we've taken um, uh, location extensions and we now have uh, a location-oriented format that will serve in a four-pack. Um, we have yeah. all the vertically-oriented formats. Um, and, and we believe that, you know, these kinds of experiences are um, uh, unique to mobile and, and, and helpful. But for, if there are other things that we can do for, for you know, general text ads in order to make them more effective on, on mobile, um, uh, we're very open to that. Um, you know, we always have this balance between, uh, we, we have a, a, a balance between uh, offering control to our advertisers and we offer tons of controls uh, relative to other platforms and, and on an absolute basis uh, and complexity. And given that we've got you know, millions of advertisers now uh, and you know, ranging from uh, people who do this uh, you know, in a few minutes a week while trying to run their one person business to uh, some of the most sophisticated folks in the, in the world, um, you know, we do have to make trade-offs sometimes. Um, and so if we're making those right, great. If we're, we're making those wrong, uh, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Um, well, and talking about mobile optimization. So when enhanced campaigns came out, the the premise for combining tablet and desktop was that the, you were seeing, or Google was seeing, similar behavior. So we had smartphone behavior and we had non-smartphone phone behavior. Um, so I'm not going to ask if we're going to get tablet vids, unless somebody else has that. But um, I, I guess I'm wondering, are you still seeing that separation between, I mean, the combination that people behave yes. the same on tablets as on desktops? Yeah, and, ab and actually tablet performance has been getting a little bit stronger relative to desktop. So, um, but they've largely been in line. And so you think it's still the right call to have them combined? Yes. Okay. When you said the tablet performance is getting stronger, meaning people are converting better on tablets than on desktop? Or? Yeah, and taking a look at conversion rates, then uh, oh. conversions on tablets are a little higher than desktop right now. Any reason for that that you can, I'm just curious. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's probably a combination of, uh, I, I think it's probably a combination of, uh, uh, demographics as well as uh, the situations in which uh, people are using their tablet devices, they actually have uh, more time and more opportunity for intent. Like if you think about how you use a tablet device, uh, you know, maybe you're watching TV and you've got your tablet with you or you have an extended period of time and so there's this sort of like situational bias that's creating that. Uh, we know that it's not true for every single use case. We know there are some use cases where, um, like for example, if you have uh, you know, if you're driving an app, you want to be able to uh, do so on tablet. It doesn't make any sense to advertise on desktop, which is why uh, with our app-oriented formats, um, you know, we can serve on, on uh, tablet and on mobile devices. You know, only the platforms for which an app is, is relevant. And uh, um, one other thing. So uh, Jeremy Hall mentioned yesterday from iProspect that the, um, that the mobile numbers from, um, you know, the 50% that the searches have surpassed 50% in 10 countries, that those mobile um, searches com include tablet, is that true? Or is it, no. they're separate? They're okay. separate. So when, mo that was my assumption. So when Google talks about mobile, we're just talking smartphones yes. consistently. Okay, great, thanks. Great. Um, oh, I think it's you. What? Oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> system. Uh, <laughs> uh, <subtle. laughs> yeah. So one of the big announcements during the live stream last month, um, and I don't know how many of you were, had the opportunity to tune in, um, but there were a lot of announcements last month during that event. Um, and one thing that hasn't received a lot of attention, I, I don't think, is the data-driven attribution and kind of harnessing that odometry data that's been in GA Premium and so bringing it into the wider universe. Can you talk about what that's going to look like for people? And sure. Well, I mean, work? so uh, we, think that, we think that finding the right attribution model for your business is really, really important. And we're not the only people. You know, if when, uh, uh, when we surveyed uh, advertisers, um, you know, most people were using last click attribution. And most people wanted to use another attribution model. And the barriers tended to be, 
you know, complexity, finding the right attribution model, other things of this nature. Um, I think that in order to really, so we offer uh, a bunch, we're, we're gonna offer uh, a bunch of different attribution model uh, choices. Uh, we, we already do in, in Google Analytics, but um, we intend to uh, directly in AdWords, um, uh, including data-driven attribution, where we'll try to figure out the right attribution model that's best for you. Um, you know, there are kind of two, there, there are kind of uh, two barriers that lead to, uh, uh, lead to people not adopting uh, uh, another attribution model beyond last click. Um, one of them is uh, the quality of tools uh, or the complexity of implementing tools. We want to take that off the table. Uh, and the other one is organizational challenges, frankly, where, you know, if you've got uh, your search group and you've got your uh, display group and you've got uh, your group for stores potentially or other things of this nature and when you're taking a look across or social uh, if you're taking a look across uh, uh, all of your ad formats um, you know you may find for example that uh, by advertising on display um, it improves the performance of your search campaigns uh, but in order to do so might involve uh, you know the success criteria for each group uh, uh, needing to be reevaluated and so um, and that's something where you know we can offer advice, but we can't necessarily help with. But we, we can work on the tool side, and um, uh, we do think that people who get this right um, and have a more holistic view of uh, uh, of their advertising uh, tend to do better across the board. Um, and so, really, like my my big message is that attribution is one part of sort of doing uh, um, you know holistic measurement uh, uh, and having a, a more holistic consideration of. Uh, of how you advertise. So micro moments, attribution, uh, and some of the measurement work that we're doing uh, is all designed uh, to uh, achieve that objective. So when, when will that kind of roll out? And is it gonna replace the current attribution tool in AdWords, or how's that gonna, how's data, gonna data, data, we're gonna We're gonna include all the attribution models. We're gonna include that in AdWords front end, and it's gonna roll out later on this year. Okay. Um, can we talk about offline measurement a little bit? Yeah. Cool. Um, so this is really exciting work. That we're, this is this is really really exciting work that we're doing. Um, and so uh, we've had estimated total conversions for a while. Uh, at the end of 2013, we launched uh, cross device conversions. Um, uh, after that, uh, we've been doing uh, some releases for offline conversions. Uh, one is uh, to measure uh, store transactions, which is uh, where basically. Uh, what you do is you integrate with a third party. Uh, we've already integrated with a third party. Uh, they do some matching in order to go from an ad click all the way to a purchase. Um, the other tool uh, that we announced is store visits, where um, we basically, uh, where we take data that users have shared with us uh, for their location history and anonymize it and aggregate it and use it in order to approximate um, store visits. Um, we think this information is really powerful. If you take a look at the full value of mobile, um, uh, really, you're, if you're only taking a look at the online value of mobile, uh, you're really missing out. Uh, the mobile value from calls, store visits, and cross-device conversions is often quite significant. Um, in fact, uh, for advertisers who are doing, uh, uh, for advertisers who are doing uh, uh, store visit measurement, a lot of these folks are finding that we're delivering more value uh, in stores uh, than we are online, um, and so the, the best advertisers are doing uh, some, some really neat things with, with the, uh, uh, these data. So for example, like Famous Footwear uh, found that 18% uh, of their ad clicks were leading to store visits, uh, and they took the top keywords um, that were being used uh, uh, for their ad campaigns and uh, rearranged their stores around those, uh, around those products. So that when you walk into the store, um, you know, their merchandising is affected by their search campaigns, right? And so these kinds of holistic steps are uh, really interesting and uh, quite impactful. Um, and you can do that by using uh, our data. Were they just using the mobile data to, to figure out what was most converting and then... That's right, that's right. Was the idea if we put everything in the front, the mobile people are in a hurry and they'll see it more quickly? Or what was, yeah, how did the rearranging, what was sort of the impact of it? Well, they were taking a look at, um, so, uh, you know, they were taking a look at what are the most popular products that right. people are searching for. And then, um, you know, instead of having to look in their stores at foot patterns or right. other things like that, or having to take a look at what products are going through the till, 
um, they have uh, uh, their cash registers, th they have an early read on what's interesting right. by taking a look at those, those search data. So they literally turned the store into a landing page. <laughs> they kind of changed yeah. the store into a landing page, yes. But I mean, that's not so, that's yeah. not so unreasonable. You've got people with mobile devices who are trying to do research in your stores. You know, you've got people who are 500 feet away who are looking for something fast. And so now that we, now, you know, you have these opportunities as marketers now to really affect user behavior. Um, there were some reports that, that Google finally let advertisers incorporate first party data into ad targeting. I'm wondering if you can talk a bit about is that going to happen or what you're thinking about it, maybe some of the uh, privacy issues that might be involved or the discussions you're having if you do that. And, and kind of related also, um, there's also been reports that, you know, that Google continues to debate whether or not to allow search term data, search history data to, to flow outward and be used even more for remarketing. Uh, so I guess I kind of maybe lump it in the same way. Wow. Um, so we don't have any products to announce in the area. Um, at, in general, how we think about it is, um, you know, uh, we have uh, we have two two parties here who are very important. We have users in search, and we want to maintain we want to maintain user trust, and we hold ourselves to a very high bar. Um, people are comfortable searching for anything on Google. Uh, and we want that to be the case. So we want Google to operate in very predictable ways, and we want uh, user data to be held to a very high standard. Um, on the other side, we have advertisers who are coming to us, and they're like, look, you're letting us get at some of our customers, but you're not letting us get at all of our customers. And you know, it, uh, it's fine. Like, uh, so remarketing lists for search ads, like folks who are using it are super happy, and it's super effective. And folks who aren't using it, you probably should be using it um, because it's a very effective tool. And they're like, this is great. You know, if you know that, um, if you know that a customer uh, uh, goes to our website, um, then uh, we can access those customers in an anonymous way, and that's great. But we have all these customers who either have gone to our website before we set this up, or uh, folks who we talk to on the phone, or folks who've operated into our stores, and you're telling us that stores are important too. Like, how come we can't access those customers? And we say, well, we want to protect privacy, and, and uh, you know, we want to protect user privacy and do all of this stuff, and you know, we want to make sure that this is first-party data, and you're not uh, uh, buying this customer uh, uh, from uh, another source, and therefore offering the user an unpredictable uh, experience uh, on Google. Um, and so we have to debate these issues in coming up with a solution. Um, and, you know, uh, like, I, we will definitely do more in the uh, remarketing space um, uh, because we see the benefit for users and advertisers, uh, but we're very cautious. Okay. Um, so kind of going a little bit back to the mobile measurement. So sure. um, obviously with limitations of cookies um, on mobile devices, there's challenges there. Sure. And Facebook made the big splash last year with Atlas. Um, so, and Google's made a big push with estimated total conversion. So I kind of, I'd just like you to talk more about what the data means for marketers and why, we talked in the session yesterday about attribution, how estimated makes people nervous. Um, and I just kind of wanted, if you could talk about why marketers should trust the data and you know, maybe starting with cross device and why it's important to be taken yeah. into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, uh, absolutely. So what we do is we take very large user populations and anonymize them and then uh, use, uh, apply, uh, uh, you know, very conservative uh, standards uh, to forecast up those populations to the full population of users. Um, we do this for cross device, we do this for store visit conversions. Um, and uh, the fact that we have uh, uh, a very large user population um, for both cross device and, and store visits, um, and the fact that we apply uh, you know, very conservative uh, 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 assumptions to forecast those up and we, you know, 95% confidence intervals and, and everything else. Uh, we feel really good about these conversions. And is it just? It's just. Is it just based on users who are signed in? It's not. There's more that goes into this, right? Or how? I mean, I know for store visits, there's certainly more that goes into it. But for cross device, is it based on people who are signed in, sampling and extracting? From That's correct. There? Okay. That's correct. And we have a large percentage of our users who are signed in. And yeah. so these are these are pretty conservative techniques. And the truth is, like, I mean, you know. 
take a look at the data. Like, I mean, so uh, if you don't like the word estimated, you have a few different choices, right? You can ignore the data. Seems not so sensible. You can take a look at the data and say, all right, you know, um, let's see if it works for me. Or you can accept it 100%. Um, we think it's good enough to accept it 100%. And in, in fact, pretty soon, we're going to make this available in bidding. So you, know, you can use those data in, in, in order to do bidding. I mean, because uh, uh, we're pretty confident that, this is, that, that you know, these are very conservative estimates. Um, but at minimum, you should be thinking about this. Um, stepping away from cross-device for a bit, taking a look at store visits, um, the approach that we have is, is pretty unique. So, we have a large population of users who share location history with us. Then, um, and we get to a certain level of precision. Um, on top of that, we have uh, hundreds of millions of buildings that the GEO team uh, has mapped, the exact dimensions. So like, for example, if you zoom into Seattle and Google Maps, it, you'll see these 3D renderings of, of buildings. Um, and we have hundreds of millions of buildings around the world. So we use that in order to improve precision. And on top of that, we have a panel of over a million people who we can push out questions. So for example, if we're not sure that uh, you, know, you stepped into REI over here uh, in downtown Seattle, we can ask a user, are you inside REI, who've, you know, who've joined our panel? Uh, and they say yes or no, and then we use that in order to improve our calibration. So we have a, a pretty unique solution for, uh, uh, for measuring store visits that's, that's strikingly accurate. And so, Right now, we're at hundreds of advertisers. We'll get to thousands of advertisers by the end of the year in 10 countries. And we think that this is going to be a really great platform in order for you to, to, to measure offline impact. I want you to send a message to somebody, say, are you an REI? And then I want you to send another message that says, look behind you. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's creepy. <laughs> you just waved it. <laughs> but we have, uh, this panel is pretty cool. So we have, you know, like over a million human raiders who um, uh, get paid small amounts of money in order to answer these kinds of questions, and we use it for a, num a number of different things. We use it for uh, brand metrics, we use it for uh, uh, geocalibration for this stuff. Um, uh, it's a really great platform, Google Consumer Service. Fascinating. Um, so the CPCs have been on the decline for, for several quarters now. Um, it, and it seemed that enhanced campaigns were going to be part of the answer to the drop, but it, it, that didn't really seem to to kind of curtail it. And then I think some of the explanation had been, and I can't recall from now if it was from Google or from analysts, like, is mobile, Google doesn't end it to mobile, mobile's killing everything, the CPCs are dropping. And then on the last learning call, it was like, oh, you know what it is? R YouTube is doing so well that it's YouTube that's bringing down CPCs because there's so much viewing going on that actually, I think, if I remember the explanation right, there was so much viewing going on that you're, you're getting less for the ads or, any, cheap what, clicks, lots of them. Lots of cheap clicks. Lots of cheap what, clicks. What is the situation? I mean, can you talk about what YouTube's doing and, and what has been going on with the mobile CPCs and just mobile in general? Is it mobile CPCs are really um, so? I mean, mobile CPCs are really healthy. We have more advertisers. Enhanced camp from 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 my perspective, um, and I think from the user's perspective, enhanced campaigns worked because we have more advertisers who are now thinking about mobile. Um, you know. Uh, there are lots of there, there are lots of other follow-on problems. Like there are a number of advertisers who don't have mobile-optimized websites, so they're not getting all the value out of mobile mm. uh, that they would be able to. And so that's that's you know, mobile getting and other things of this nature. But um, you know, uh, you know, we think that we've assisted the the transition to mobile. Mobile CPCs are healthy. Um, uh, you know, uh, there's always been this mix where we report uh, on uh, Google properties, on uh, Google owned and operated. Uh, and that reflects the, the mix of clicks or uh, views in the case of, of YouTube um, uh, on those properties. And so, um, you know, we've known this for a while. This has been the, the same explanation for a while. We just haven't talked to the street about it. So we decided this quarter, um, hey, you know, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this effect. Um, mobile is doing great. Uh, mobile search is doing great and rising quickly. Uh, mobile CPCs are, are, are healthy. Um, and uh, uh, we're getting a lot of growth out of YouTube, and that's what's, that's what's affecting the, the overall mixed CPCs. So it's been YouTube this whole time? It's been YouTube, yeah. The whole it's time. been YouTube growing, yeah. Do you ever wish you could just like say, come on, Larry, let us just report just what's going on in search on its own and, <laughs> and, and break out more numbers because 
everyone else is bringing us down or whatever. No, you, you, I mean, there's no breakout by product area at Google. It's like, right. this is the money we made. This is the money we made off of our own sites. This is the money we made off of our network sites. But there's no like, this is what we made in search. This is what we made on YouTube. This is what we made on display, that sort of thing. Yeah, but I mean, there are pluses and minuses to that, right? Um, you know, I think we do a good job of striking a balance um, uh, in you know, sharing what we can uh, to the street uh, uh, and at the same time uh, not oversharing information that might potentially be misleading or might, uh, uh, or might cause, um, you know, uh, require additional explanation or cause concerns or other things like that. Like, I think we do a good job of telling a story um, that is, uh, um, that's transparent and uh, sufficient for investors. Um, uh, kind of looking broadly at the competitive landscape, so search has sort of been cut up. We've got Amazon, Pinterest. Pinterest has made a big splash about being, you know, search for inspiration, what you want to do in the future. Um, we've got people spending more time in apps, we've got in-stream ads, the native, native in-stream ads, as we were talking about earlier, um, becoming kind of a dominant format on mobile. So what is, um, What's going to keep Google competitive and AdWords specifically, and search specifically competitive? Well, I think what we want to do is build a great platform for those moments of intent. We want to do so across every device. We want to do so uh, for every moment of intent, that, the commercial intent that matters. And we want to do so uh, across web and apps. Um, and I think that Google has a great platform for those moments of intent. It's not just uh, it's not just desktop web search, it's web search on every platform, it's our search apps. Um, we have a number of other properties like Gmail and Maps and YouTube um, that are also uh, quite strategic. Um, and we're building on our platform, uh, you know, year over year um, with Android and Chrome and, and, and things of this nature. Um, and so, you know, when there have always been a number of different ways to advertise. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could buy display ads from any number of different channels. Um, and what we did was, was at, at Google, this was before my time, we decided to focus on, on search. And, you know, uh, when Google first started, they didn't think about the fact that, uh, so people say 82% of time is, is spent in apps, right? Um, and they, they didn't really pay attention to the fact that 82% of the time then was spent on various websites, you know, consuming news or other types of content, um, uh, email, things of this nature. Uh, what they did was focused on the 5% of the time that really, really mattered when people were making purchase decisions and made it great. Um, and we still intend to do that. Um, and we think that we're doing pretty well at that. Um, now, how that works is evolving over time. And so uh, let me give you some examples of how uh, our model is changing. Like if you take a look at media and entertainment, we have these rich formats where you can play content or consume content or watch content or other things like that directly from the search results page. So uh, if I look for, say, uh, Radiohead songs on my phone, uh, 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 I could get a list of songs and then uh, we would have ads to uh, Google Play or to Spotify or uh, folks of this nature. And that will go either directly to their website or directly to an app if it's installed. Um, we have app download ads. Uh, and we think that uh, a, a huge change to the model is what we've announced uh, uh, for search ads in Play Store in order to provide opportunities for you to get app distribution uh, that we think is a much more natural model than uh, what folks have today, promotion directly within the Play Store. Um, and then also app deep linking, where um, you'll see that between uh, the Chrome team and the Android team, we're trying to push apps in web closer together. So for example, on the web, uh, you, know, you can get notification access. You can get icons directly on your home screen. Uh, and we're trying to make the web much easier to build uh, in uh, a rich and powerful way so that at, across apps in web, you have a single surface with app deep linking so that you can go directly into an app, even if you have hundreds of apps on your phone in a way which is very natural. Um, and so uh, we see ourselves, if we do our jobs right, we see ourselves as, as uh, in the center of that process. And we think that there are really exciting opportunities uh, across all of that. I do always think it's interesting when people uh, focus so much on time spent in apps as they 
you know, it's going to kill search, as if time spent on search has ever been a key reason that search I, is expensive. I mean, search actually, is we look, so actually, actually, we look successful. at the opposite. Uh, we, if, right. if we spend additional time, we're really mad, and we have to, you know, yell at one another. Like, if, you know, we, we know, for example, that, you know, abandonment rate goes up with, uh, you know, ten, tens or 100 milliseconds, right? Like, we really, really obsess over getting people what they want as quickly as possible. Wait, what did you just say? So if, like for example, if you go to, if you go to search and it's uh, you know, 50 milliseconds slower, uh, we find that uh, you know, abandonment goes up or we, our, our quality metrics go down. And so we want to get people, uh, we want to get people their answer really, really quickly. And so we take a look at that, we take a look at that time very seriously. Um, and so we actually, you know, like we could very easily uh, keep the person on the page for much longer, but we find that if we take a look across our portfolio of quality metrics, if we get people what they want more quickly, um, it's actually, it's, it's better for us. People search more uh, and they get a better user experience. Okay. Um, I think we'll go to the open Q&A now. Um, the way this works is, uh, unlike our other sessions, you actually put your hand up and someone will bring you a microphone. Um, and if you attract the attention of who's running the microphone, then you win, which I think is Michelle back there. Um, custom columns, is there any, uh, uh, anything on the agenda to use, put custom columns in the keyword level? Right now you could have them at campaign level and at, uh, ad group levels. Custom columns at the keyword level. Um, I, am, I don't think we have anything in the roadmap. This is something you want to be able to do? It would be really helpful. Awesome. We'll take oh, that back to the team. I forgot to say, by the way, uh, if you want to ask the audience some questions, too, you can think about it a little bit, and we can do it right before the end. You don't have to. We only have 10 minutes. So. No, hands up. <laughs> no, you know, hands up if you want to, if, you know, if they've got cool. things. We'll get through a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Hey, I want to follow up to a, a very important uh, point I think Ginny was making earlier uh, about some of the interface issues. Uh, so I, I, I always get the sense that uh, you introduce features at a great pace, but you don't end up tying off a lot of the engineering that, that, that would be helpful to advertisers to be able to really optimize to those features. For example, uh, e extensions. Sure. Uh, we still don't have reporting at extensions that allow us to do any reasonable testing on ads that uh, you know, track an ad to the ad group or the keyword. Uh, you know, we, we also don't, we, we never can see what an ad actually looks like. We, we develop an ad here, the extensions are over there, this is over there. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice to be able to have like an interface that said, hey, this is probably what your ad will look like. Give us, give us some presentation. But so th those are a couple of things. But I, I, I get the sense that there's some developmental ADD that goes on because you're, you're, you're sort of um, continuing to put out great features to, to, to support ad revenue growth and to support uh, people that are searching. But you know, all these people that are paying this a boatload of money that are trying to actually do it efficiently, if you don't tie off the engineering cleanly and, and uh, you know, do all the things that really need to be done to, to finish the engineering work, we, we can't, we, we're, we're stuck in mud. So we can't get to those new features because we can't do reporting right. We, we can't figure out uh, what, what's happening with extensions, et cetera. So I know you went to enhanced campaigns and you did a lot of rework, but it still seems as though there are a lot of things that are, are pretty big and pretty major that are still sort of just hanging fire out there. That's great feedback. It sounds like um, you know, this is something that we try to do. It sounds like we're falling short. Um, and in the areas where we're falling short, we'd love to hear about it. Um, you know, uh, you know, we've improved extension reporting over the years. Um, and uh, I like your feature suggestion uh, uh, for you know, showing what the ad might look like uh, on top with, with all the extensions deployed or what it might likely look like. Um, uh, and you know, that's something that certainly we can consider in the next version of the interface. Uh, we're actually planning to, to um, uh, rebuild the AdWords interface uh, pretty drastically and modernize it. Uh, and that's a really exciting effort uh, when? Uh, that I'm going to talk about more later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, you know, so uh, I will say that, um, so I'm not going to make an excuse, but typically what ends up happening is uh, when we have the option to, you know, release new and interesting functionality which uh, delivers results to advertisers, um, folks say, I want to be in that beta, I want the feature deployed, I want to get it going. And then, uh, you know, or do I wait six months for us to have, you know, 
auction simulation functionality and full reporting functionality or other things like that. Most people want the ROI sooner uh, and are willing to wait for uh, that functionality to come later. Um, and then it's our obligation to make that functionality come later. So if we're falling short on, on, on that functionality, then, uh, uh, then we certainly should do better and I'd love to have a list. But we do try to do that uh, actively. Thanks. Hi, Jerry. I know that there's some advantages or what the advantages are to separating search and display, like creating separate campaigns. Are there any advantages to keeping them together? Um, so, I mean, it's a best practice other than, uh, 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 you know, other than, uh, well, search with display select works for some folks if you don't have, um, uh, if you don't have very sophisticated, uh, uh, and distinct d display needs. Um, you know, the idea of search with display select is that um, if you want to get search-like performance out of your display campaigns, uh, uh, and, and you know you're a performance-oriented advertiser, we really try to do that by uh, offering a, a high ROI uh, slice of display. And so, if you're primarily a search advertiser that also wants to consider uh, some display advertising that has uh, similar performance characteristics then that would be one advantage, is, is using search for display select. We have another question over here. And, but we also have Amy on the other side of the hall. If anyone over on that side has questions, please do raise your hand over there as well. Thanks for taking my question, Jerry. This way, thanks. Uh, my question's regarding universal ad campaigns. Can yep. you talk about that a little bit? I think on your I.O., you talk about consolidating all the ad buying into AdWords. So uh, I'm just curious, how does that make app buying, targeting, measurement easier for app developers? And also, is app indexing required as part of that process? Thanks. Sure. Um, uh, I, app, in, oh, app indexing for, uh, no, app indexing is not required. So uh, universal app campaigns, for folks who don't know, are uh, an easy way to advertise your apps. And the idea here um, uh, is, uh, to be able to work across uh, search, display, and YouTube uh, with an ROI-oriented format. So, um, you know, you provide us with a, a cost per install, and we just uh, we drive uh, app traffic that, that works at that cost per install. Um, the idea there is that um, uh, the the motivation that we have is that we want to be able to uh, provide uh, app promotion for a wider variety of developers. <coughs> Pardon me. We know that there are a number of very sophisticated developers who use our uh, existing app product, but taking a look across our inventory, it's pretty complicated. You know, you've got to have, um, uh, you know, you've got to have uh, separate campaigns for search, display, and YouTube, and you've got to optimize uh, each one of those independently. Um, it may make sense if you have a super high budget, uh, or uh, if you have super complicated needs, uh, or it's really difficult in order to achieve your uh, intended uh, cost per install. But for a lot of advertisers who have apps, they just, they, they don't have the sophistication, they don't have the time in order to be able to do that. Um, and so we're trying to come up with a, a great alternative. Um, and so uh, the, the idea is to have uh, a single automated way to advertise your app on Google, uh, and we'll figure out uh, a great way to, to deliver uh, significant traffic at a, a good ROI. All the way back here to your left. Hi, um, I work for an industrial B2B company and everybody says structured data is really important, um, but it's kind of hard for us to know what you're looking for, um, structured data in terms of, for us, because we're not local, we don't have a lot of storefronts, we're not doing things that seem to lend more towards structured data. Are you looking, um, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what Google likes to see on the structured data front. You know, are you looking for basic things like this is an image, this is a video, or are you looking um, kind of, give a little direction for people who might not be on the B2C or the um, more local side of things? Um, so there are, uh, so we are uh, trying to acquire structured data on a, um, uh, on a vertical by vertical basis, uh, and we're also exploring ways to um, harness structured data more generally uh, in order for advertisers to use it uh, for themselves in order to get more effectiveness out of uh, um, their own campaigns. Um, in the cases where we're doing it on a vertical by vertical basis, we just try to find um, uh, structured data that matches like what businesses actually would normally do in their normal operations. So uh, for 
uh, local businesses, it's location information for for uh, retailers, it's, it's product-oriented information and, and things of this nature. Um, and you know, for autos, it's car inventory or things like this, um, or car attributes, uh, things like this. Um, and so uh, you know, we, we try to do this in a way which is natural. So um, you don't really need to, as, as a, uh, a B2B company, like, you don't really need to, if we do our jobs right, you won't need to prepare your business for structured data. We, uh, we would just come up with structured data formats that uh, make sense to your business, and you would just uh, be able to uh, upload them to us. I think we've got time for one more, so let's try over here. Hey, how's it going? Um, my question is, uh, it's been talked about recently that uh, in certain um, searches, uh, auctions, the um, impressions have been going down, and the CPCs have been going up. And um, it's also been uh, sort of mentioned that it might be um, related to, um, you know, Google's profit um, goals, which sounds <laughs> outlandish, um, but um, it, it's also uh, it's also been mentioned that um, I think from Google that um, personalized searches um, and personalized browser browser level data ha um, is a, a factor in, in that as well, um, whether or not to show an ad or just show organic or where to show that. And I was ask I was going to ask you about. Both of those, um, specifically the the first part, but also um, like if there is browser level data, what what specific data are you guys using? Wow, interesting question. Um, so there's no the there's no conspiracy, um, and uh, search and ad personalization are done totally independently as two separate teams, um, and so there's no collusion either. Um, so. I mean, in some query categories, the the uh, in in some query categories, either the number of queries are going down, uh, or the number of ad impressions is going down because they don't necessarily meet our quality standards. Um, I mean, I could think of a number of reasons why uh, ad impressions might be going down and CPCs might be going up. Um, ad uh, ad personalization and sort of knowing how uh, um, uh, you know. Um, Knowing how clicky a user is, uh, how how, click, how clicky a user is, how likely they are uh, to click on an ad, and how likely they are to be able to get a good experience on an ad is something that um, we look at. Um, on the organic side, they have an, a, a whole another uh, 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 approach that they use for personalization. Um, I guess it's really hard to comment uh, on the specific case without understanding a little bit more about the queries. But I, I will say, you know. Like full stop, we're not like manipulating search results or manipulating the ad auction in order to uh, uh, to increase profits. That's just n not what we do. Um, we're we're right at the end of our time. Um, I suspect. Do you have time if people want to catch you afterwards? Jerry may have a yep, little bit of time. Five, five or if ten he's, minutes. Is if fine. he's if he's here, he can maybe answer some questions. And then if he has to head off, then please let him go. Uh, <laughs> but let me hit you. Uh, let me hit you with one last question, just for yourself. I, I was just kind of curious. Like, what's sort of the last ad that's really caught your eye, or anything that really stuck? I mean, you you, you oversee all these ads, but do you click on any of them and think, oh, that that got me. That was great. Um. So I'm particularly fond of uh, I'm particularly fond of product listing ads. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times when I'm doing uh, uh, a lot of times when I'm doing shopping, uh, being able to find uh, the right inventory uh, is really helpful. Um, particularly, uh, so uh, I'm a runner and uh, I look for running shoes uh, periodically. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't know for any of you who are runners, uh, shoes get discontinued, and you know. If you don't have three or four pairs sitting in the closet somewhere, it's, it's a real bummer. And so uh, the last pair of shoes that I had that was discontinued, uh, the perfect answer showed up, like a bullseye answer showed up for a couple of discount stores that happened to have them in stock uh, in product listing ads. And so I was able to buy them really quickly, uh, which I thought was just a great uh, intentful experience. Thank you so much for being here today and spending your Thank time you. with us. We really appreciate it.